Well, chem students, welcome to the fourth installment of some ionic equilibria discussion of how salts behave in water. And in this particular uh, final chapter, we're going to look at the hydrolysis equilibrium problem we started last time and work it out in detail for one of the uh, two salts that uh, fit our mold. So here we go. Uh, what's the pH of a 0.22 molar solution of uh, KBRO? And you're given the Ka for HBRO as 2.0 times 10 to the minus ninth. So one of the things that should clue you on, clue you on to the idea that this is a hydrolysis problem is that you're given a Ka for a substance, HBRO, that is not in the solution. Take a look. KBRO is in the solution, not HBRO. And there's a huge difference between the two. One of them is an acid, the HBRO, and the other one is a base, the KBRO. So when you see this, you should immediately say, wait a second, the first thing that has to happen is this salt has to break apart into ions. And then one of the ions is going to break apart with water. It's going to actually react with water and have what's called the hydrolysis reaction. So let's see that first step. The first step is it's going to break apart. And if we take a look here, I've written that KBRO, aqueous, breaks 100% down. So when these salts dissociate, uh, especially when they're strong electrolytes, right here we see that potassium sitting there. That's a, a clue that it's going to 100% break apart into ions. And it does, as we see in this, uh, the products here. And then we can say, well, what is it going to look like when we're finished? Well, we're going to start with 0.22 molar of the KBRO, but we did not put any of the ions in there. So if we let this thing dissociate 100%, that means all of the KBRO will break it down. And we know that that means that our X is going to be all of the 0.22, so it's negative 0.22. That means our X for the K plus and the BRO minus is also going to be positive 0.22. We know it's going to shift to the right because, first off, it's going to only break apart into ions, and second off, because Q is equal to zero. That's definitely less than any equilibrium constant we might have. So when we're finished, we're not going to have any of that salt left. We're just going to have these ions floating around with a concentration of 0.22 molar. All right. From there, we have two options of things that might that might actually break apart into ions. The K plus is not going to. We talked about that before, uh, and the reason is because it's part of a strong base. It's part. That's what its parentage is. And strong bases don't make equilibrium; they just break apart. But BRO minus, we already know right here. It's got a Ka. All right, and it's related to this thing called HBRO. With that in mind, we can make the reaction that's going to make these guys connect again. They're conjugate of each other. One's the acid, one's the acid, and one is the conjugate base. Let's write that reaction. So what happens is the BRO, the BRO minus, I don't know where that two came from, but that BRO minus, it will react with the water to form HBRO and OH minus, and we're gonna have an equilibrium here. We're gonna start with 0.22. Where did I get that number? I got that number right here. This final number is my initial here. This is a two-step process. First, we're imagining it breaking into ions. Then we're imagining it going and reacting with water. When it reacts with the water, it's a conjugate base, so it's going to steal that proton away, and it's going to leave us with um, OH minus and HBRO. We don't have any of these substances to begin with, so Q is equal to zero, and we're going to shift to the right. So we get a minus X. We get a plus X. We get a plus X. We add our columns together, 0.22 minus X, and X and X. Notice, water's a liquid. I've left this blank so I can make it really stick out. It's a liquid, so we ignore it. That's why I put the lines there. Get in the habit of writing those lines in there so you don't accidentally put the water in your equilibrium expression. Now that that's done, we know that our equilibrium is going to be a case of B. How do I know that? Well, I'm producing OH minus. If I produce OH minus, I need to have a case of B. There's no exceptions to that in this class. All right. And we also know it's going to be equal to the products divided by the reactants, which we've shown. And then we put in our equilibrium row we put that right into our equilibrium expression, and that's what this thing is right here that I've just boxed. All right, so we don't have case of B, though. If I scroll back up, we've got case of A right here. So if we've got case of A, we need to, we need to calculate case of B, and there's how we go ahead and do it. Case of B is equal to KW divided by KA. 
We found that out in the last video. And voila, it's equal to 5.0 times 10 to the minus 6th. That means we now have an easy problem to solve. We start with our KB again. We know that it's equal to 5 times 10 to the minus 6th right here. And we can simplify, since it's 10 to the minus 6, we can simplify this aspect of our equilibrium expression to just be 0.22. That's why I use the approximate sign right here. And now it's easy to solve. I just multiply um, the 0.22 over and I get x squared is equal to 1.1 times 10 to the minus 6. Take the square root. I note in my ice table that x is equal to my hydroxide ion concentration. I look up here. Do you see it? Here's the hydroxide ion concentration. And at equilibrium, x is equal to OH minus. That's what this is telling me. At equilibrium, o x is equal to my OH minus concentration. It's also equal to my HBRO, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter to us. We're asked, what's the pH? And I know a connection between pOH and pH. So I go back down to my problem here. And since I've got my OH minus, I take the negative log of that. That's my pOH, and I find it to be 2.979. And then I finish off the problem by subtracting that 2.979 from 14, and I get an answer of 11.02. Just like we expected, this conjugate base created a basic solution. There you have it. This is how we do hydrolysis problems and what we'll cover in class.